the medfly originated in Africa. It has since spread throughout the Mediterranean region, Southern Europe, the Middle East, Western Australia, South and Central America, and Hawaii. In general, it's found in most tropical and subtropical areas of the world. The medfly became established in Hawaii in 1910. Hawaii remains infested with this pest and no eradication program is currently underway. The first U.S. mainland infestation occurred in Florida in 1929. Several infestations have occurred on the mainland since then. However, state and federal eradication programs in California, Florida, and Texas have prevented it from becoming established. In the sterile insect technique, medflies are reared in large quantities, sterilized with a small amount of irradiation and released into areas where they mate with wild medflies. Such matings do not produce offspring, and eventually the wild population is eliminated through attrition. The Mediterranean fruit fly cycle consists of egg, larva, pupa, and adult. Under ideal conditions, the life cycle can be completed in 21 to 30 days. Pupae are placed in the bottom of each cage. Emerging adults feed on a mixture of sugar and yeast. They mate and begin laying eggs in three days. Eggs that are deposited in the egging tubes are collected by washing out the tubes daily. Eggs are collected for five to six consecutive days, then the cage is washed for recycling. Each cage produces an average of six million eggs per day over a five-day collection period. One mixer is capable of preparing 4,000 pounds of diet media. The diet consists of bulking agents, sugar, yeast, chemical preservatives, and water. Other additives may include antibiotics and acid for pH adjustment. Larval diet is deposited into the trays. At full production, 1,320 trays will be prepared each day. Eggs suspended in a gel mix are sprayed onto the diet with an automatic pipette. Trays are placed on a monorail transportation rack and moved into another room for incubation. The eggs begin to hatch in about 14 hours and the newly hatched larvae feed on the diet and begin developing. After two days, the trays are then moved to a second room where they remain for three additional days. At the end of this period, mature larvae leave the medium by constructing their bodies into a C shape and extending their bodies to pop out of the trays into the water catchment. Larvae are collected twice daily by draining the water slowly from the collection lanes. The collector controls the flow of larvae going into his or her collection sieve net using a valve at the end of the gutter. After concentrating the larvae, the collector pours the larvae into a collection bucket. This collection bucket is lifted from the trench and rolled along a hoist trolley to the end of the so-called pop room. There the collected larvae are transferred into plastic containers and taken to the next room. The collected larvae are mixed with vermiculite and placed into pupation boxes. The boxes are placed in the pupation dark room for two days. At the end of two days, the pupae are sifted out of the vermiculite. Sifted pupae are placed onto screened pupal trays. Those racks of trays are moved into a holding room where pupae continue to mature. The maturation rate of the pupae depends on temperature. At 66 degrees Fahrenheit, the pupae will reach shipping age in 10 to 11 days. The pupae are shipped from the facility approximately two days before they would emerge as adults. In order to differentiate the released sterile flies from wild flies in the environment, it's necessary to mark sterile flies with a fluorescent dye. The pupae are dyed in a rotating drum and placed into tubular plastic bags for irradiation. Each bag holds approximately 210,000 pupae. One after another, each bag of pupae is placed into a metal canister and irradiated. A dosimeter tag placed in each bag indicates that that bag has been irradiated by showing a change in color. It takes about four minutes to irradiate each bag. Bags of pupae are placed into specially designed boxes and refrigerated until shipment. 
Then the pupae are transported to the airport in an air-conditioned van and cooled until flight time. Sterile flies from rearing laboratories outside the continental U.S. are transported to eclosion or hatching facilities near the sites where the sterile flies will be released. Pupae from the rearing laboratory are received for processing at a preparation room. A preparation room supervisor inspects each bag of pupae for a properly exposed dosimeter badge. This second inspection is another safeguard assuring that the flies have been sterilized. The supervisor also checks the temperature of each bag to determine if the pupae have become overheated in transit. Each bag is emptied into a paper bucket and a quality control sample is removed. Separate samples are collected from daily laboratory shipments. The employees then scoop approximately 6,000 pupae from the buckets into paper bags. The top half of these bags have been removed to properly size them for the rearing containers. The paper bags are then stapled twice along the open edge and transported to the incubation trailers for further processing. As those pupae are being processed, the kitchen staff prepares food for the newly emerging fruit flies. The staff prepares eight kettles or batches of auger daily. The diet is made of water, sugar, auger, and a preservative. The ingredients are brought to a boil and then the hot solution is poured into trays to cool. The diet gel is then cut into blocks. One batch of diet gel will supply enough food for 230 boxes of fruit flies. Six paper bags of pupae are placed into each box and a specially modified lid closes the box. The lid has been modified by removing a section of the original container and embedding a screen. The auger or food for the flies is placed on this lid screen. Employees then begin the stacking process where stacks of five boxes are placed against the walls of the incubation trailers. The diet is cut into blocks and two employees work together to place a block on top of each box. After the auger has been placed on the lid screen, the employees secure the stacks together with two sets of string clamps. The stacks are then arranged so that they have about 12 inches of clearance between them, allowing for adequate air circulation. After each incubation trailer is filled with boxes, the thermostat is set at 77 degrees Fahrenheit, fans are set to the on position, and the lights are turned off. The fans will allow for proper air circulation throughout the trailer to prevent temperature inversions. As medflies emerge from their pupil stage, they crawl up the sides of the paper bags inside the boxes, then fly to the top of the box to feed. The medflies are kept in this incubation trailer for four days. After four days incubation, the adult medflies are transported in the boxes to a refrigeration trailer in preparation of the collection or knockdown phase. Here, the flies are chilled to 38 degrees Fahrenheit for approximately 30 minutes. At this temperature, they're completely immobile and can be manipulated. The boxes are passed along a table where the auger is removed, and then the box slammed down on a table to knock the sleeping flies off the lid and interior. The paper bags are removed and discarded. Then the box is inverted over a collection funnel where flies fall into a collection tray located below the funnel. After the medflies have been collected, they're poured into an aerial release box that holds about 80 pounds, or approximately 5.7 million flies. The aerial release box is weighed and taken to a waiting airplane. USDA uses its own planes or contracts with commercial aerial applicators to conduct all aerial releases of the sterile medflies. The aircraft have been modified to accommodate the aerial release boxes and can release either sterile medflies or sterile Mexican fruit flies. At the proper time, 
the sterile flies will be dispensed from the aircraft through tubes in the bottom of the aircraft. Inside each aircraft, a computerized system based on GPS technology provides precise information for accurate navigation. The navigation system, accurate to three feet, provides a map display of the assigned release region. The map then allows the pilots to know when to start and stop the releases, as well as what flight lines to follow. The navigation system tracks the position, airspeed, altitude of the aircraft, status of the release machine, and the speed of the release. The pilots proceed to the designated area and release the sterile flies from an average of 2,000 feet above average terrain. The chilled flies then will warm up in the air and fly to trees in the release area. At the end of each workday, pilots submit their flight logs to an aerial coordinator who monitors the quality of the release and the rate at which the flies are being distributed. Samples from each shipment of pupae are processed through a quality control section. Employees conduct quality control tests on each shipment of pupae for flight ability and emergence. Mating tests are conducted weekly for each laboratory of origin. For the flight ability test, the inside of tubes are dusted with talcum powder. This powder ensures that the flies must fly out, not walk out of the tube. 100 pupae are placed in the tubes, which are then placed in a clear plexiglass cage. The emerging flies are vacuumed from the cage every morning and evening. Then on the morning of the fourth day, the contents of the five tubes are counted. From the original sample of 500 pupae from each shipment, the staff is able to determine percentages of emergence and flight ability. A grid emergence test is conducted to provide an early indicator of problems with emergence. This test involves setting up two grids of 100 compartments with one pupae per grid and plexiglass is used to close off the cells. A wire screen provides circulation on the opposite side. These grids are counted for emergence twice daily. The quality control staff also conducts mating propensity tests on pupae shipments from each of the three laboratories once weekly. On the second day of incubation, male and female flies are segregated in separate containers and provided with water and diet mixture of sugar and yeast for seven days. Cages are then prepared and 25 males are released into each container. 25 females are then added to the cages of males. Every 10 minutes for the next hour, mating couples are counted and removed with an aspirator. The speed of mating activity is a factor in determining the mating index. After one hour, the remaining flies are counted and a failure rate is determined. As insect rearing workers prepare for the next shipment, the recently released sterile medflies are preventing the establishment of this potentially devastating pest in the release area.